Over the last month or maybe two, we've really seen VV reduce the amount of mint sizes. What does that mean going forward? So it's been very interesting over the last couple of months, we've really seen VV reduce the amount of mint sizes. Uh, before they were, you know, for a collectible, maybe they're doing five different rarities. Now they're doing two or three and the mint sizes have come down. And for the comics, you know, they used to always come out with 30,000. Every now and then they do less. But uh, now for normal comics, we're seeing 20,000. And for some of these higher end comics like uh, ASM 300 or even AF15, we've seen mint sizes of 10,000. Obviously, there's that outlier, uh, amazing uh, Spider-Man 252, which is 1,000, which they, I kind of feel like uh, they may not do again. They know that that one was uh, just, they're just still testing things out. I think they're pretty honest about that. But that's a, you know, it didn't, it, it, I think the test was successful in that they saw that that level of scarcity does does crank up the price. So I think one of the things I want to discuss today is are we going to see this continue? Is it ever going to go back to 30000 What is it doing to the price? A lot of interesting things here. So, And we'll speculate on some stuff. So that's always fun. So um, as you know, if you look at a lot of the different numbers, you know, at VV Fox or Bravo's Assassin or all kinds of different people that are looking at things put in cheeks, you know, back in January, February, March, that was kind of the heyday. That was our bull, big bull run. And... Uh, you know, was that all bots? You know, were people selling gems? You know, probably all the above. You know, we don't know. But what we do know, and it's probably real now, is that the entire market is depressed. Obviously, we're looking around the world, and it's not just uh, VV. It's, it's all the markets, really. And what does that mean going forward? Well, what's interesting is that we've seen VV adapt in a number of different ways. Number one, they've changed the mint size and the number of rarities. And uh, that's interesting because going forward, they'll be able to adapt as market changes. So when you look at it from the perspective of uh, the marketplace and uh, what they're going to be able to do in the future, I think we'll see this kind of ebb and flow going forward. And how does that affect the collectibles long term? Oh, well, I mean, it's pretty simple. Obviously, if there's something scarce, it's you know has a potential to really explode in value later. So let's discuss some of that. Let's let me get into that. So. Um, AF-15 is obviously the big one with only 10,000 available. Um, you compare it to the real world where, you know, for blue labels, there might be 23, 2400, something like that. Um, that's obviously 25% of that, but the amount of demand for that is so high. It's just out of control. And that's where we obviously see the common sitting around 500. I expect it to actually go up. Um, I think most people do. It's just... In people's minds, the first appearance of Spider-Man, you know, it's just something somebody you know would want to collect. It's very collectible, and uh, and you know when they think about that IP and they think about you know the scarcity, five hundred dollars seems to sit correct in their mind. But let's kind of extrapolate that forward and talk about some of these other ones, because I really do believe it's this constant ebb and flow within collectors' mind of what is the value versus what is the scarcity. And one of the great things about VV is the scarcity is known. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about uh, some of these numbers. We're seeing 10,000 and, and, and uh, 20,000 because really that's what we're seeing a lot. So I'm gonna, I have some physical comics that we can compare it to. So let's, let's discuss that. So my first one would be uh, this one right here, which is uh, we have this on the app. So we're for black. Uh, this one is signed right here by the artist Tradmore. I love this uh, book and this series. And this is an interesting one because I think that, uh, it was very popular. And the print run, when it came out, was uh, a little over 100000 And this book, if you buy it on eBay or whatnot, raw, is probably around $20. Don't quote me on that. And maybe a 9.8 might be $100 or so. But that's because, once again, look at the print run. Now, this is a popular book. Most people like this series. so But not as much. as, And there's no first appearances, really to note in here. It's just more of a, a fun series that people enjoy, but 100,000. So here would be a one that we also have on the app. I'm just trying to go lower. This is Marvel Now.1, first appearance of Ms. Marvel in costume. Uh, we've seen this one. I've talked about this one a lot. This print one was 34,000. So the other one was 100,000. This is 34,000. 
So in the 9.8, I think this goes for around $700, $800. And uh, raw, it's probably, you know, two, $300, something like that. What's interesting is, is you can see now uh, how, what the right price point is. So when you only have a print run of 34000 the raw, once again, a raw, meaning not slabbed, is going $200, $300. So that's interesting because how do we kind of move that to VV? Now, obviously, VV is a speculative market. Not all people have, or all physical collectors, most physical collectors have not accepted that as a, you know, collect. They're not really into the digital collecting thing yet. But you can see that with 34,000, now this one had a print run of uh, 30,000. So um, it's kind of about the same. So does that mean the common could kind of push up to 200 eventually? Maybe. Uh, but it gives you some ideas of what the possibilities are for, uh, for something like that. Now I'll show you something that's more rare. So this one we have on the app. This is the secret rare for Venom 3. So this is uh, one of my favorite comics that I have. Noel is the bad guy. This is his first appearance. This one is double signed and double uh, sketched. In other words, they did a little sketch here by the artist um, Ryan Stegman and the author um, Donnie Cates. So... It's a 9.8. So only, I think, around uh, less than 4,000 of these were printed. So now, we're t once again, that's why I picked. So we've, we've seen a 100,000 comic. We've seen a 30,000 comic. So this is a rare comic, relatively speaking. Uh, this one, with all the signatures and stuff, maybe goes for, you know, $1,000, $1,500. But for, in terms of, if, you, if it wasn't signed, it was just raw, I'd probably go for maybe $500, $600. Once again, these prices fluctuate depending on you know, who's in the movies and whatnot. That one at a 9.8, even a raw is probably going to be two, three, four hundred dollars um, Not 500 not $400, but, you know, hundreds of dollars. And then you think about on the app, the secret rare, there's only 500 is far less than 4,000. So you can see the potential for this particular secret rare. So I know these, these uh, mint numbers seem like they've come down, but they are actually really low in comparison to uh, to the physicals. I think that that means that, from my perspective, there is a lot of potential here for these prices to explode. Um, of course, the one we just saw was Amazing Spider-Man 300, first appearance of Venom, which is a big comic. Only 10,000 available. And only 6,000 or less than 6,000 publicly available in terms of the common. And I think it was selling for around 40, un definitely under 50 gems right now. So this is very interesting. I think that when you look at some of these mint numbers, and I do, you know, we're seeing it now. Once again, I think digital collecting uh, is going to be a thing. And, uh, and Marvel's beginning to push it now, as we know. So it's very interesting. Now, one other piece that we have, they've talked about and we've learned more about with the London Decon is this whole burning concept. So you could take and bundle up your uh, collectibles. Now, I think originally they said you could burn them and get MCP points, which is the Master Collector Program, which is interesting and possibly people would be willing to do that. Another thing is, of course, it sounded like you could burn 10 and they give you back a special rarity or version of the comic, which I think is very interesting. So when you already have these depressed mint numbers, you know, like once again, 10,000 or 20,000 or even 30,000, and now you have people potentially burning 10 of them at a time, I think these uh, comics could become incredibly scarce. Now, let's look at it in the greater picture. If you look at some of the other numbers that I've talked about, um, if you look at VV Fox's tracker, I mean, she's showing on average now there's, you know, 3,500 active wallets or so a day. That's not very many. But that sounds about right when you look at they're releasing 10,000. It's not like they're all selling for, you know, 1,000 gems each. No, they're selling for relatively low prices. And, and that's because we just don't have as many active users and wallets right now. The question is, is can we survive this bear market uh, to, to, a, to a bull market, which, you know, that's just how these things go. So I do think that some of these comics uh, will explode, and especially if people start burning things, I think it will be very interesting. I always recommend to people that you want to look for the, you know, buy whatever you want if you love it. That's not a problem, especially if you love X-Men, you want all the X-Men. Some of them are valuable, some of them not, aren't as valuable, but it's fun to have the set, the run. But to look to these first appearances of big characters, I really feel like... Um, 
once we can get through this kind of bear market, these mint sizes, which may seem big right now, are going to become very, very small. And uh, as we attract a couple more users, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be quite impressive. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy, I think. Other ones that obviously can show us a little bit of what the price could be is if you look at for the and one would be Kang, obviously Avengers Eight, which is uh, his first appearance, and you can see that that's a ten thousand mint one, and I think the commons are a little bit over a hundred gems. So that kind of shows you, and that's a very mature comic. In other words, it's been in the app a long time. It's and, and the maturity is that it it goes from buying it for whatever seven or twenty dollars, and into hands that want to flip it, obviously, maybe double, triple, quadruple their money. But then eventually it falls into hands where it's a collector that just doesn't want to let it go. And that just takes time. Now, even that collector has its own, a price point. You know, if it's a million dollars, sure, they probably would sell their Avengers 8 or whatever. But there is a price point that they are, un, current price points that we're unwilling to sell. And obviously that price point is around 100 gems for Avengers 8. That's where what will happen to most of these comics but we just need to give it more time. And so if you want to flip and make, you know, double, triple your money right out of the gate, I I understand that. And I do that as well. And that's why I buy duplicates, triplicates, you know, multiples and stack some of these things so that you can make money as it grows. But I do think eventually many of these comics will fall into hands where whatever the price is at, they still want to retain that or they feel like it's going to go higher. And so that's when we'll start seeing some of these uh prices really accelerate anyways that's what i got for you this week uh very interesting keep track of all those mint numbers um i think they're probably going to be, be depressed for another two three four five six months perhaps we can take advantage of that thanks for watching take care i'll talk to y'all soon